Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my top trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own solid brick barbecue using Fortera's Red Engineering Brick from the Butterley range. And the tools you're going to require are a shovel for mixing your sand and cement mortar if you haven't got a cement mixer, a brick laying trowel, pointing trowels, spirit levels, a hammer and bolster for your cuts, a tape measure, a set square for help setting the corners out on the first course, a pencil and your plans. And of course, don't forget your PPE when you're doing your mixing and cuts. Now to start with, you're gonna to have to decide where you're gonna build your barbecue. Of course, I'm building one in my workshop here for demonstration purposes, but you at home may be wanting to put it on a concrete slab like this, which is perfect to build on. You may be wanting to build it onto some solid slabs. As long as they're bedded down well and they're not movement, it's okay to build on. But if you do have a garden, you're gonna to have to dig up some of the grass and lay a concrete strip foundation. This is about 300 millimeters deep, but the size and the width of that I'll talk about later once we set out the bricks. So, part of your kit, you'll get these grills. I'm gonna place that one here. Now these are designed for using different type of bricks, whether they are imperial size bricks or metric size bricks. I'm using Fortera's engineering red bricks, which are a metric size. And I'm just gonna do a dry run by spotting these of this griddle. And there we go. So we've still got quite a fair bit of movement. Some manufacturers that make barbecue kits say that you can build it with a single skin, which is fine or you can build it with a double skin. I always prefer a double skin because it's going to be a lot stronger. So that would mean creating another course all the way around here. And then your second brick, we'll bridge across it like this and tie all the bricks in. But we'll go into more details about them later on. Your next stage will be to draw a floor plan. This opening piece here is where my griddle is going to be. I've got my two bricks here to one side, two bricks on the opposite side, and then four across the back. One, two, three, four here. Now my second skin, where we started off on that corner, that will come all the way around the back and finish there. And again, a stretcher going across that side there. So it's very important where you lay your first course because that dictates where the rest of them are going to be. Because I'm building onto a concrete slab, I can draw it around the bricks using my pencil where the mortar is going to be laid. So now I'm going to start to mix my mortar. Now I'm mixing my mortar up with a cement mixer. If you don't have one of them, you can mix it up by hand using a shovel on the floor. But the ratio you're going to require is four parts red building sand, one lot of cement and one lot of lime. And if you choose, you can add some dye in the mortar. This is the kind of consistency you're looking for once you've mixed your mortar. So I'm just laying some mortar now over where my pencil line is there. I'll square this up again once the mortar starts to bite in on the brick. So very gently just laying a brick on top of there for now. I've probably got about a 15, 20 millimeters bed below it and we will come back to that and the levels in a moment. We'll place my first one on. I'm going to take my second brick, butter up the end like this. So I've got about a 15 millimeter bed on there, which when I place this into here, I'll push it across and reduce that to about a 10 millimeter pip between that brick. Just trying to cut it off to keep it as relatively clean as possible. And put a spit level across there. What we're trying to do is make that level across the top the best we can. And of course, level across here too. Okay, once we've got them in place, we'll then return this corner. So I'll start by putting a little bit of mortar on this corner here. 
of the actual brick. Again, a little bit thicker than what we need. And then I squeeze it into there, just gently tapping it across. Double checking that we're level here. And bringing it level across here. Now back on the end of the brick. And then we can start to place that into position. Just cutting away any mortar that might be in the way. Checking that we're level each time. It's worth taking your time with this first course because as we mentioned earlier, it does dictate where the rest of them are going to be. So again, just placing that brick into position, gently tapping down, tapping it on the side, checking here that we've got that 10 millimeter gap, the same as the rest of them. Okay, so now the inside course has been laid. Double check that you're level all across. And if you're happy with the level, then you can also check your square on the inside here, perfect. And the inside here is, yep, perfect. You can even get your tape measure. Measure the back, which is coming in at 920. So the front from corner to corner is also spot on 920 there. And likewise, with here from the front to the back, 570 millimeters. And same again, 570 millimeters. So now I'm ready to do the outer course on the first layer. So that's your first course now complete. Now, I mentioned earlier, if you weren't building directly onto a concrete slab or some very stable uh, tiles or slabs outside, then you would need to put a foundation in. So of course, when we're building a double skin brick wall like this, it's going to be around about 250 millimeters wide. And of course around here. So your foundations, we said earlier, it wants to be about 300 millimeters deep, which is about 12 inches. And it probably wants to be about 400 millimeters wide. So that would take it from about here to here. And that's 400 millimeters all the way around where the brickwork is going to have its dead load onto. So your first brick on your second course is going to straddle over to the two bottom ones. And take your spin level, checking that it's level front and back, and then checking that it's flush with the corner and this corner as well. And if you're happy with that, check the front, making sure he's flush this way. Perfect. You can do the same on the opposite side or you can start to work your way down here. Just putting a bit of pressure on the front of that while you tap that up, because you don't want that to move. Checking that you level across there. You're flush along this edge. Each one of them bricks now on the second course is staggering over the first course by 50% and that's tying that bond in then the way we want for the strength. Fortira manufacture a wealth of red, buff, yellow, brown, blue and grey coloured bricks. 
With a history dating back over 150 years, Butterley Bricks can be found in buildings as diverse as St Pancras Station and modern housing developments. So that's the second course now complete. Just going to infill between the centre and then bricks to strengthen it up. Using your spirit level, check all four corners to see that you're happy with the second course, then you can start the third course. Now once you've got to three courses up, you can start your fourth course by bedding a brick on each corner, transferring the levels across, making sure that the level on all four corners crossing from corner to corner. A little bit like a house when you see the brick layers build up and they stagger up each corner and then they run a string line in and fill all the bricks in between. This is a little bit too small of course to be running string lines in but when you've got your corner one set into place you can then use the edge of your spillet level to make sure they're flush that way, they're level along the top, flush along the back and sides and of course level across the top again. Now I've got four courses in place and the mortar around this bottom bit is starting to set. Certainly through these first three courses, it's ready to do a little bit of pointing. So you can get different size points and trowels. If you have a little bit of a gap, for instance, in any of these areas, you can see a little bit of a gap there. You can always get a small amount of your mortar and fill that in. We don't have to worry about what it looks like at the moment. The brick's still a little bit dirty, of course, where I've been handling it. Now you can do a weather struck pointing, which is, if we look along this top line here, we can start to do that. And that weather struck, meaning it's set in a little bit on the underside of the towel, rain will hit this, run down it, and then it drips off along the front of that one. And that finishes just with the flush edge on there. You would also do the same, of course, on all the papers where they're coming upright, like this. Just cutting them into one side and flush with that edge. Once it's dry, it's brushed off. The other alternative is a bucket handle one, where you would press into it and create a little round kind of shape to the actual mortar itself, which I'm going to do a bucket handle across the whole lot of this. It's about the most standard one you see on a building site on most brickwork and it's rubbing it nice and tight pushing that mortar really deep into that joint making sure there's no gaps in there where any rain or frost can get in in the winter time you can get your little soft brush and just brush it off like this once this is completely dry we can clean off all of these bricks and make sure they're nice and clean. I've now built eight courses on the outside and just seven courses on the inside. This is the level where I want to create my grate. So what I need to do is step some bricks out now, either side of here, just to take the weight of that and hold it into position. Now full brick is too long, so I'm going to cut some down into three quarters. This will allow them to bed in and just hang out maybe about 40 or 50 millimetres. Now to cut the bricks is quite easy. Just get myself a board, placing it down so it's nice and secure. I'm using a bolster and a lump hammer. I'm placing the bolster on the area where I want to cut through, which is cutting just about a third off this brick. Gently tap it. You're not trying to break it with one tap. What you want to do is just fracture all around four sides. Gently tapping it like this, lining that up and that side up. and you'll find that bit will come away. You may need to nip off a tiny little bit of some of the edges if it splinters away. So that's the six that I need for the next course. Once these are cut, you can bed these into position just like the rest of the bricks. 
then you can lay a loose brick on the top to counterbalance the weight. So I've put my tooth and course in at the eighth level here, which is stepping out. Then I continued the ninth course on all the way around, which is standard, the same as the rest of them below. Then the 10th course, I've put all four corners in here, leveling them out as we have done through the other courses. The next stage is to now apply a full brick, but create another ledge coming out here. But this time I am going to put a full brick and not a cut. And that's going to stagger over this brick and onto that back brick. And it's going to leave me then with a cut, a slither to put along here. But that'll tie my bonding on there. So aesthetically, when it's looked at from the outside, it just looks like a full brick. But it is, in fact, cut down the middle this way for that outside course. And that leaves us with this full one, strengthening that ledge up here and on this side. Just like the earlier cut, but we don't place the bolster there. This time, we're placing it along here and here. Don't forget to use your PPE when cutting bricks. Now these are cut, they can be bedded in, flush with the outside edge of the brickwork. Then you can repeat the process like the opposite side. So now, I've got my first course stepping out, second course stepping out, I'm going to do a third course. However, I'm only going to use two bricks to step out for this one because my grill is a little bit narrower on this top section here. So they'll be in place, a full brick will be along the front here. Then, I've got two cuts where we've cut the brick right down that way. They're going to be here and another one of them here and that's going to keep the bond looking the same there the same on this side and also on this side too so now you can bed your third layer of bricks stepping out on the 12 course So now I'm laying a half cut in here, filling in the gaps with the mortar. This will be covered by the 13th and final course. Now if you built your brick barbecue out of solid bricks all you would have needed to do for the top course is point it up around the center here like we have done on the face of the bricks of course i built mine out of bricks with holes in them where i had these left over from building the house so i wanted to use them up on here which they're perfectly fine to do so it's just that i have to cap the top of it so i've mixed some sand and cement with the dye in it and then i've just spread it across the top about 15 20 millimeters thick and I'm just shaping it up around the edges and then once it starts to set I'll get a damp sponge and just kind of rub it all over the top of here it'll give it a little bit of a coarse finish on there but make it more weatherproof as well now the barbecue itself that sits on the eighth course where we did the first row of bricks stepping out that takes the weight of that you put your coal and your wood on there and the main heat source comes up then on the tenth course where I step the bricks out again that's where the griddle sits on. You're going to put all your food in there and it's going to be cooked on the 12th course and fit in a smaller grill. So once the food is cooked, to keep it warm, it can be sat up here on the top. So that's my solid brick barbecue now complete. Built out of four tiers engineering bricks from the Butterley range. If you're looking for more inspirational how-to videos, check us out on all social media handles. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. But if you need to know more about the bricks I've been using, 
just visit the website fortira.co.uk.